Today's daf is daf Chaf Hey. And we'll start with Amar of Sheshes, approximately 10 lines down from the top. Minah Midile. How do I prove to you that during the pious, the Kohenim who are vying for the zchus, the privilege of bringing the karman and doing the avodah would have to wear their big kahuna, even though you might argue that this is just a preliminary stage to determine which Kohen gets the, gets the rights. The Sanya, I derived it from a brysa. The brysa says, Lishka Sagozis, this is where the Sanhedrin sat in a certain chamber that was located in the Azara, on the eastern side of the Azara. Kimin Basiliki Gdolahai. So it was built like a very large palace. And the exact di- diameters or measurements were the, the Lishka Sagazis. Just one second. Uh, it's on the east. Okay, I don't have the exact, it's a Mishnah in Midos. But anyway, it's a very large area because that's where the 71 elders of Sanhedrin would sit. Vizaken Yoshev Bimarava. And within this chamber on the western side, there was a Zaken that was sitting in his chair. And we're going to talk about a Zaken who was an expert in the laws of Pius, and he would instruct the Mamuna, who was the officer who would institute the Pius, how to do it. But the important thing for us is that it says clearly in the Brisa that he was sitting. And we have a principle, Ein Yeshiva Bazara. That area within the Azara that was sanctified is prohibited from yeshiva. It's only standing. The Gemara is going to drive that from a posse. So that's going to lead Abaye, as we'll soon see, to the conclusion that the Lichka Sagazis was not exactly in the Azara. It was half in the Azara, half out of the Azara. Hakonim Mukafim the Omdim Kimin Bacholiar. Bacholiar is a, a round kind of an ornament or a button that a woman would wear to, to, to tie and fasten her blouse. And uh, the Gemara is using this in order to portray the vision of a circle in which the Kohenim, who are now part of the pious, are all surrounding in a circle. And Hamemuna above in Notel Mitznefes Mi Rosho Shal Echad Mihem. The person whose job it is as the officer of the Migdash to implement the pious, he would take off the mitznefes, the hat, from one of the coin. Because as he was counting the number that he envisioned in his mind, whatever number he made up, and he counted the fingers of the coin, as each coin would put up a finger, he would begin and he would begin with the uh, person, that coin who's now bareheaded, whose mitznefes he had taken. And the Gemara is going to analyze in just a second whether this mitznefes is part of the Big Day Kahuna or it's Big Day Chol. Obviously, Rav Sheshis is going to push the agenda that this was Big Day Kodesh because Rav Sheshis is of the opinion that the coin wore the Big Day Kodesh the big day kahuna during the pious. And the Yodim, now once he knew where he started his counting, because that was with the coin whose mitznefes he took off, the Mimenu Pius Maschil, he knew that that's where the counting would begin, and therefore he would go around and around until he reached whatever number he had in his mind. When he got to that number, that coin was Zoha in the pious. He won the lottery. Now, it could be that there were many different kinds of avodos that were all determined by that one single lottery, meaning if, let's say, the uh, the counting fell on, we'll call him Aral of the Kohen, then it could be that the rest of the avodos would go 
to Aral, to the man standing on Aral's side, and then from there to the next man over, and the next man over, they, they were able to establish and achieve all the various jobs and give them out with one with one pie. So that's going to be a sugya that we'll get to. Now, Rav Sheshis wants to prove that the Kohanim, when they stood in the circle as part of the pious, they were wearing big day kodesh. Isal kedaik big day chol mitznefes big day chol mi ika. The mitznefes is a very complicated headgear. The Ramban in his commentary on the Torah writes that it consisted of linen, one thin strip of linen, linen that was sixteen amos long. And they wrapped it around and around and around until they created this turban. So the Gemara thinks it's not comfortable to assume that your average person on the street was wearing a mitznefes. The word mitznefes here in this brisa is a reference to the mitznefes as one of the big day kahuna. He's one of the four godim that every coin had to wear. So you see that when they started the pious, the, the Kohanim were wearing their big day kahuna, and then we understand how the Mamuna was able to take off of its nefes. Gemara says, Ain. you know what? Even on a, an ordinary basis, outside of the context of Kohanim and big day kahuna, they wore a mitznefes. Kiritani, Rabbi Yehuda, Vitema, Rabbi Shmuel, Bar, Bar Yehuda, it seems from this statement that it was quite common for the mother of the Kohen to produce, to weave, to manufacture homemade big day kahuna in order to beautify the mitzvah of big day kahuna and have her own son where the big day kahuna that she created. Now, she would have to take whatever materials that she used, whatever expenditures for the creation of any of the begotten, and she'd have to dedicate that to the Truma Salishka because the big day kahuna had to be purchased from the funds of the community that were ded dedicated for Hegdesh. And Chazal were always a little bit hesitant to accept the contribution and the begotten that were woven by the mothers of the Kohanim in this context, because maybe they would still in their heart of hearts want to retain ownership to say that my son, the Kohen, is wearing my begotten. And therefore, Chazal made the following distinction. We're going to accept and rely on the mother of the coin that she did, in fact, dedicate all the funds to the communal chest of the Trumas Halishka. However, we're going to be super duper careful and stringent with regard to what's called a carbon tzibur. A carbon tzibur, we really need that she would have had full fledged nidava biyafel liba totally, totally given over without any reservation in our heart. So for a carbon seabor, we would not rely on these garden that were created, manufactured by the mothers of the, of the con. But for a carbon yachid, we could rely. So that now the Gemara is saying the status of this mitznefes, which was created by the mother of the Kohen, is that of Big Day Chol. Again, it's not exactly Big Day Chol because as far as, uh, let's say, a person brought in a Dava, and it's in the Dava's Yachid, obviously, so then the coin could wear this Ege, this Sones, that was manufactured by his mother. But nevertheless, it's not really full-fledged Big Day Kahuna, and the proof is that we don't allow the coin to wear these Pagodim when he engages in the Avoda for a carbon seed. And now at this point in the sugya, the Gemara is going to analyze in the name of Abaye the exact location and status of the Lishkas Hagazis, where the Sanhedrin sat and where the Mamuna 
would effectuate the pious. What was the status of the Lishkas Hagazis? Amr Abayin, from this b'risa that we just studied, Shmami, know, we're going to derive two conclusions. Number one, that Lishkas Hagazis was Chetia Bakodesh for Chetia Bechol. The Lishkas Hagazis had to serve a double function. It was, if you will, a schizophrenic of sorts. On the one hand, it had to be Chol, because the Sanhedrin would sit in the Lishka Sagazis, the 71 elders, and there's no sitting in the Azara. So obviously the Lishka Sagazis was Chol, it wasn't Kodesh. But on the other hand, the pious has to take place in the Azara, in an area that's sanctified. So it must be, says Abaye, that the Lishka Sagazis was split into two, half of it, shall we say, was towards the west, which is outside the Kodesh, and that's called Chol, and half was on the east, and that's in the Kodesh, that's part of the Azara. Second Shmamino says Abai that Shnei Psochim Hayu, Echad Pasuch the Kodesh, the Echad Pasuach Bachol, that not only was the Lichkas Hagazis separated and split into two, the western part of it and the eastern part of it. The western part of it was in the Chol outside the Azara, the eastern part in the Kodesh in the Azara. But more than that, it had to have two entranceways. One entranceway to the east and to the Kodesh part in the Azara, and the other to the west. And the Gemara is going to analyze this. The Kodesh, first of all, I'll prove to you that it's not possible to assume that since the pious took place in the Lichkas Agazes, Therefore, the Lishka Sagazis was pure, 100% Kodesh. Why? Because we learned in the Bryces, Zakeim Yoshev B'marava. On the western side of the Lishka Sagazis, the member of Sanhedrin, that Zakeim, who was in charge of teaching the Mamuna how to implement the pious, he was sitting. V'amamar, ain yeshiva b'azorah, el amalchi beis David bilvad, there's no permission for anyone to sit in the Azar except for those descendants of Malchus based David. And this is derived from a pasuk in Sefer Dvarim, Perakid Ches, where the Torah says, Lamod Lasharis, Ha'omdim Sham Lifne Hashem. The Torah emphasizes standing. We don't sit, it's not respectable, it's not respectful. To sit in the Azar that's prohibited. But there's a posuk in Shmuel Bey's Perik Zion that says, David, And the Gemara derives from that the conclusion that Malchus Bey's David has a special leniency because of their status allowing them to sit in the Azar. If you're going to assume that the Lishka Sagosis is pure. Chol, because now we know that part of it has to be Chol, because the Zokin was sitting there. Then Pius be Mizracha. How could they go to the Mizrach side, the east side, and implement the Pius? Vabi'inon, we need, this was a possible that Rabbi Yochanan quoted in the daf that we did yesterday, the Beis Alukim Nahalech Beragesh that we walk in the house of Hashem with excitement, with tumult. There's a lot going on over here. And that's why Rabbi Yochanan insisted that we want to repeat the pious four times during the course of every single day, because it created a whole raucous. And that's called Melech Beragesh. But we see clearly that we're talking about the Azara. I mean, if it's outside the Azara, then we're not, we're not within the Beis HaLokim. Beis HaLokim means that which is sanctified so we see clearly that the pious had to take place in the Azara. But on the other hand, we said that the, the Zakein was sitting in the western side of the chamber of the uh, Lishka Sagazis, and that was Chol. Says Abai, we see clearly that Shmami no, Chetzi and Chetzi Bechol, that we have to divide up the Lishka Sagazis half in Chol and half in Kodesh. Now Abai is going to prove logically that there are two ancient ways into 
the lishkas hagos. This al kedai to pesach echad yesh lehem. If there's only one entrance, which would mean that if you're entering into the eastern side of the lishkas hagosis, which is in the Azara, and you go in through Kodesh, then even the section on the west, which is accessible only through that one single door on the east, that would sanctify it by Kedushas Azara, even if it's located physically beyond the boundaries of the Azara. And therefore, we won't understand Zokin Yoshev Azara. But tonight, we have a Mishnah, and this Mishnah is in Mesechta uh, even if physically the chamber was located outside of the boundary of the Azor, but the opening way, the only entrance way into that chamber was through the Azor, is Tochan Kodesh. The entire chamber whose opening is from the Kodesh gets the status of Kodesh. Everything depends upon the entrance way. But if you're saying that there's only one door and that's on the western side, the Chol, where the Sanhedrin sat, then Pais B'Mizracha, how are you able to implement the Pais B'Mizracha even though the Mizrach side of the Lishka Sagazis was located in the Azar, but the only entranceway was through the Chol on the western side, Vatnan, and we have a Mishnah in Masech the Meiser Sheni that says Bnuyos Ba Kodesh Upsuchos Lachol, even an area chamber that's built in the Azar, but it has only one entrance way through the Chol is Tochan Chol. The entire interior of that chamber has the status of Chol, even though it's located in the Azar, because the only entrance way is through the Chol. And Lav Shmamino, we have to conclude Shnei Psachim Hayula that the Lishkas Hagaz had two entrance ways. Echad pasuach ba'kodesh, the echad pasuach la'chol. And now we begin the Mishnah on the bottom of Af, Chafei and Alf. In the previous Mishnah, we had spoken about the Trumas Hadeshen and the first pais. And we know, as the Mishnah uh, records it, that there were four, four times pais. What was the second pais? And that's the subject of our mission. Now, the second pious would divvy up avoda to no less than 13 coin. And the Gemara is going to vacillate back and forth whether they did the pious 13 times over, or as we mentioned earlier, one pious was sufficient. And then the coin standing to the right of the coin of the coin who won the pious, he would get number two and number three, we keep going around and around till we give 13 coin in their privileges, their avod, their ob obligations for the day. So what are these 13 different avodos that were divvied up in the second pious? And we'll go through the list and then we'll count 13. Number one, Mishochet. Now this is a little bit of a challenge to us, because we know that shechit is kshera bizarre. And yet, it seems that as a matter of course, and perhaps according to the din, we would want a coin to do the shechita. Perhaps because the coin, once he does the shechita, he'll be ready to move on to the next stage, the Kabbalah Saddam, the Locha Saddam, perhaps we want to give the koanim who are dedicated to the avoda as many opportunities to do the avoda as possible. So therefore, since it was really the koanim who are vying for the option of this privilege to do the shechita, therefore it was included in this pious, pious number two. Then we get to Mizori. Now notice, that this is going to be a big deal, that the Mishnah omits Kabbalah Saddam and Holacha Saddam. So we go straight from Shechita to Zrika. And the Gemara is going to vacillate which of these two, the Kohen Ashokhet, who won that lottery, or the Kohen Azorik, who won the Zrika, which one would do those two avodos in between Kabbalah and Holacha Saddam. But in any event, those two are profoundly uh, omitted from the Mishnah. 
and the count of 13. Then we have Mimedash in Mizbeach Apnimi. Till now we talked, we were talking about the Dechen in the Mizbeach Achitzon. Now we're going into the Mizbeach Apnimi, which is in the Heichal, and that's where they burnt the Ketores on a daily basis. And there were ashes there that had to be cleaned out. So that's number three. Umimedash in Ishamenora. Once we're in the Heichal, we're ready for Dishan Amenora to clear off the ashes and the wicks from the last, from the last, the previous had look at that yesterday. Me Maila Evarim Lakevesh. And who will get the job after the, the Zrika Saddam to take the Evarim that have to be burnt on the bath, bring them up the ramp up the Kevesh? And by the way, the truth is that the Mishnah here is apparently not sensitive to the sequence of the Avodos because the truth is that the Tamid, the Shechita Satamid, and its Rika Saddam took place after, not before, but after the Dishun of the Mizbech Apnimi and the Menorah. So the Mishnah is not is not interested now in a time sequence, chronological, but rather in how we awarded these privileges. And certain privileges were greater than others. And Dishun Hamizbeach, although, and Dishun Amenora, although they came early and they were actually before the Shechit and the Zrika, but they weren't considered as Choshev as the Avodas Hadam. So the Choshev Avodas accounted first, the Shechit and the Zrika. Now, we're going to take the various parts of the Talmud, the various limbs of the carbon Talmud, and we're going to divvy them up into different parts. We have major, major issues about the sequence in this case, but the Mishnah sequence is the following. Harashva regel. First, we begin with the head and the regel, which is a little bit strange because the rush is most important. But why the regel? We want at the shoulders or the body of the of the animal. Apparently, it was easy to take the regel and wrap it around the mokom shchita. It wasn't covered from the mizbeach that the dam of the shchita was exposed. So they used the regel to cover the. the the area of the shechita in the rush. Anyway, going on, we have shte yodayim, and yodayim are the legs. So we have now the two, every animal has four legs. So we already have the hind leg on the right side that went up with the rush. Now we have the two four legs that went up in front. Ha'oketz regel. Now we have another coin who's going to take up the tail and the Left hind leg, hachazev hagera. This is the breast and the lower neck. Shte hadfanos, the two major flanks where the shoulders were. Vakravayim, and then we have the kishkis, the intense, the uh, intestines. And now we get to the mincha, and there was a pious for the solace of the carbon mincha, and the tamid. In so far as the Talmud is a carbon ola, every carbon ola had to be accompanied by a carbon mincha. And the carbon mincha, of course, was solace that was mixed with a lug shemen, and the kmitza would be burnt on the mizbeach, so the coin would carry this mincha up the kevesh, and later on it was taken on the esh on the mizbeach. Then we have Chavitim. Chavitim is the Asir Sa'efa of the daily carbon on behalf of the Kohen Gadol, which is split into two halves, five and five, five in the morning, five in the afternoon. And all told, oh yeah, and then we have Yayin, of course. And now we're talking about Nisu Chayayin, which accompanies the carbon Tomid. The carbon Tomid had to be brought together not only with Nishay. With, mincha, with the carbon mincha, but also with nishe 
Hayayin. Again, there's a little bit of a problem here because Chavitim is wedging here in between the Soles and the Yayin. Uh, that's a little bit of a problem because the Chavitim itself. Okay, we have to know a little bit more about the Chavitim. Anyway, all told, Shlochesre, Koenim, Zochuba, we have 13 Koenim that are Zoche in the various parts of this uh, pious. All told, 13. So we have nine Kaanim who are carrying parts of the Tamid up the Kemesh. We have the Shochet. So that gives us 10. The Zore gives us 11. And then we have the two Dishans, the Dishan of the Mizbeach HaPnimi and the Dishan of the Menorah. That jacks it up from 11 to 13. Omer ben Azai, Lutnei Rabbi Akiva Mishum, Rabbi Yoshua, he's not happy about the sequence that's mentioned here in the formulation of the Mishnah, but rather, Derech Hilucho Hoya The way that it was brought up on the Kevesh, one segment of the animal after the other, was the way that they did the Hakrava on the Mizbeach. The Gemara is going to go through various opinions about this question, as we'll soon see. Ibailu, the Gemara raises the following suffix, when they do the the pious, la voda achas mefaisim, o dilma lechal avoda vavoda he mefaisim. So the pious Hashem covered 13 different koanim, each one with his own single singled out uh, responsibility. Shall we say that they did 13 pious, but then again, you don't know why it's called one pious in the Mishnah, or shall we say there was one pious, and then we just simply went, you know, one coin after the other to get the other 12 coin in uh, getting their particular avod. Toshma, the Gemara is going to bring many, many different proofs to try to come to some conclusion. The first proof comes from the Mishnah that we learned earlier on the previous Amud. Actually, this Mishnah is at the very beginning of the Parakon Daf, Chav Beis, and the Mishnah says the following, Arba Paisos Ayushan. During the entire course of a day, they were all told four lotteries. These al kedai to chol avoda mafaisim tu vahavi. You can have, in, in the second Pais alone, you can have 13 different lotteries. So this certainly would indicate that it was only one lottery and as a result of the lottery, they determined not only the first fellow who won the lottery and he got the shechita, but all the other Kohenim who were standing one after the other got the other 12. Omer Av Nachman, no. Hachi covered. This is what the mission means. Arba pa'abim nichnasim lahafis. They gathered, gathered together the Kohenim into the Lishkas, uh, Lishkas Haggazis on four occasions during the course of the day. But Eidam Chinami, once they gathered together the Kohenim and were up to the second pious, then there were 13 different lotteries. And with within, within, within the context of all of these four paisos, there were many, many sub paisos. So the mission is only calculating how many. How many times did they assemble together for the pipes?